Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. Tonight, we'll be looking at a topic entitled Understanding Key HR Processes. Our facilitator for tonight, Mr. Anthony Agbayeka, is a senior executive resource officer with Dao Technology Co. Limited, West Africa. He is a member of the Charity of Personal Management and a member of the Charal Institute of Management. He is currently doing his master's in business administration with the prestigious Amadou Bello University. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with pleasure and excitement I hand you over to Anthony as he takes over from here. Thank you so much, sir. All over right, to you. Mr. Oluyemi, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for counting me worthy to facilitate today's program, today's session, brother. Uh, uh, I want to tell you that indeed, with what you are doing in the body of HR is immense and people are benefiting from it. And I'm deeply and absolutely honored for, be, for me to be here. Um, for our participants, I say you are absolutely welcome. We are going to be having a sweat time together. And, um, uh, we're going to lead us through our the HR processes that we have, and the subject before us today is understanding key HR processes. Um, HR processes they are the backbone; they are the pivotal part of every organization that drives their success. Without processes in place, it's like a ship navigating ocean feed with uh, sharks and crocodiles. And in that ship, you will also need a captain to navigate that ship to safety. And um, the captain cannot function optimally without a compass. The compass is the pro are the processes. And uh, the captain is the HR department while the ship is the organization. So um, if the ship is not sent to the rightful destination or predetermined destination and it capsizes, there are going to be consequences. The sharks obviously going to devour the people that are inside the, the ship. And those sharks and crocodiles are the regulatory body and sometimes also affect uh, the employees. Um, I'm going to be going to go through the outline for us to see why it's important for us to have processes in places. Um, no organization want to be successful, who want to be productive and um, we want to achieve this objective uh, without putting processes in place. There must be standards, and those standards must be kept and achieving those uh, set objectives. And that's what we're going to basically going to be looking at today. Uh, we drive through uh, the processes, and uh, we are going to, uh, after that, we'll look at how uh, HR can leverage on technologies to drive processes in place to set standards and also to review what it, uh, ethical behaviors. And um, there, there we look at um, what in the scenarios where these processes are not in place and uh, what should HR people do or HR department do to ensure that the processes are in place. Thank you all. This is what we are going to be looking at tonight. Um, firstly, uh, if you have not seen this before, uh, these are actually what we'll be talking about tonight the outline, uh, these are basically HR processes that are universal. Anywhere you go to in the world, these processes are in place. Uh, you may have been practicing or formulated this process, putting this process in place without even knowing that indeed these are processes. The first one talked about the art of finding diamond in the rough. Uh, that is a typical HR process in in any organization, whether it be a one-man uh, uh, sole proprietor organization, multinational uh, organization, or uh, a global organization, this is a process that um, that is uh, in that organization. The next one says talked about uh, nurturing growth or cultivating growth. Um, the next one outline talked about putting puzzle together. I'm going to explain what this processes are, uh, this acronym in the various processes so that we understand how they relate to what we do as HR in any organization. The next uh, one said, not, um, not the end, it's another process in any organization. 
investing in the future. This is another process also. Um, process uh, fostering resilience is another process uh, that is in the people time in any organizational success. Fostering loyalty, fostering collaboration and innovation. So um, for us to understand better, what are these processes that I've just had mind? There are others that are really actually encapsulated here, uh, like um, the one for review internal processes, uh, which uh, uh, um, the, the art of finding diamond in the rough talked about uh, talent acquisition, recruitment, uh, nurturing growth or cultivating growth talks about performance management system. Putting puzzle together talks about payroll management system. Not the end talks about the exit plan, the exit process, investing in the future. Investing in the future is split up about training and development. Fostering resilience talks about work-life balance. Uh, fostering loyalty. Um, fostering loyalty talks about the onboarding process. And fostering collaboration and innovation talks about uh, open communication. So these are processes that are in any organization. And you find these ones, these processes anywhere you go. Um, it's very important for us to understand that uh, no organization who have set out to achieve this aim will not put processes in place. Is is it don't do any organization that doesn't have processes in place? Just know that organization is not far from the uh, or going underground, and there are consequences. There will be loss investment mistrust, and there are, there will be loss of loss of investment as well. So uh, the first one. It's a funny, uh, the art of funny diamond in the road, in diamond in the rough talked about. It. So uh, we firstly, we're going to be looking at the introduction. Um, we understand that in the ever-changing business scale of uh, life scale, um, processes need to, as, as human be involved, as organizations involved, processes are also involved. And also, it's very important for HR department to drive this process. Uh, we should also, also forget that uh, HR department is like the uh, fabrics, is like the thread and um, and the needle that glide uh, the fabric together. So without the HR, you cannot effectively have a process that is driven to successful end. So in a dynamic large scale of today's business world, human resource process play a pivotal role in shaping the sources and sustainability of an organization. These processes are the backbone of a well-functioning, productive, and harmonious workforce, making them integral to achieving corporate goals and fostering any workplace culture. So uh, you cannot be able to talk about workplace culture, for instance, where there are no standards, uh, where there are no processes, because the processes is actually the work uh, culture. Um, so I'm going to be inviting you to embark on a journey of understanding and mastering core HR processes that drive organizational excellence. Um, from finding a diamond in the rough to nurture growth, developed for the future and beyond, our exploration will shed light on the essential component that underpin HR strategic impact. Uh, throughout this learning experience, we dive into intricate of HR processes, availing their significance in aligned human capital with organizational objectives, ensuring compliance with relevant law and regulations. We will also discuss the latest trends um, and technology shaping the human HRO landscapes, as well as the best practice that can be uh, empower that can, we must uh, empower HRO professionals assign their roles. The intricate tapestry of successful organization, the human resource department, serve as both the weaver and the trend that binds the fabrics together. Uh, it is the human resource uh, department that can truly transform a workplace into an environment where employees thrive and organizational flourish. The transformative power of HR process in creating a workplace that is bleeding ground for success and prosperity. So if you want any organization to be successful, um, yeah, you must be able to uh, uh, employ somebody that is competent, who will be able to drive the process. Um, the reason why most organization don't really succeed these days because there are no processes. And even when there are processes, especially those that are really controlled by sole proprietors, they tend to negate those processes, uh, thinking the rules by which and caprices of whoever holds the company, without knowing that uh, without processes, their mind cannot rule a successful business. Um, 
there's uh, this uh, uh, a company, the fintech company of the, of last week, they were talking about on news that went away uh, with investors' uh, money, and the investors' money went down the drain. What was the issue? According to what I read, there were no process, processes in place. Even when there were processes, the man who was in control, who was the company, determined how he spent the investors' money, forgetting that uh, it was not actually his money. So it's very important. Processes must be put in place. Owners of business must separate themselves from business. They must realize that um, if their business must be successful, they must operate according to the process that have been set out in that organization. So, um, so the talent acquisition, which is the primary uh, number one, if you want to find a, a cap human capital that will drive the uh, success of that organization, you must be able to put a well-defined uh, talent acquisition process in place. The art of finding diamond in the rough. So the process is actually getting people who have no skills, sometimes semi-skills, sometimes people have skills, but it's the responsibility of the HR so also to refine those skills to ensure that they meet the requirement of that company. Um, the, the process of recruitment must be followed from the one right from a uh, request from any department, right from, you must be able to put in place, okay, if anybody is coming to this organization, we have a process in place of recruiting that person. Firstly, if there are vacancy, the person must, if there, there must be a request from the head of that department or whoever wants to request in that department. Then firstly, there must be a budget for it. There must be a budget that uh, this year we are going to recruit 30 persons and um, this is what their, their benefits will be, and this is what will be paid. Everything will be calculated in that budget so that when the request comes, you cross check with the budget if actually it has been approved against what you want to do. So when you find out that actually there, there is a budget for the recruitment, what do you do? You begin to seek for approval from the board or the management. When they approve, then you go ahead to formulate your um, job description, you place avert. First of all, look at if there are internal uh, requirements, internal people who can fit for those positions. When there are no, then you extend your static post for outside to be a source for candidates. So when those candidates come, you align, you should be those candidates against your parameter, against the set objective, uh, what the requirement, the skills, the competency, the experience that is required for that person to perform in that job. So once you have done that, you should send out invites to them you do your first interview, then you make recommendation for whoever the second interview. Um, after the second interview, after successful negotiating with a person, you issue a contract. Um, when that contract is done, uh, the next we are going to move into another stage, another process. But however, you know there are many people who don't actually follow this process. One beautiful part of any process is that if you negate anyone, it's going to hurt the other process. Um, I had an experience when I was working with um, a company some years back. Um, we didn't have a budget for this particular role, and uh, we are offering contract uh, services for one other company. So the, one of the director recommended his wife to be employed in that company. We didn't have a budget, and I told the man or the MD that we did not have a budget. He just said, okay, recruit him. I'm the one in charge. I'm the one to, who I've told you to recruit him. So I told him. Um, we are going to still go to follow our process. So, okay, do whatever you want to do. Ensure that she she's employed. Uh, we follow the process. We sent our advice to fulfill our righteousness, uh, and we shortly take and then we interview her with others. And she was employed. Mind you, when this lady was employed, she didn't have the skills. I made a recommendation, the interview recommendation to the MD that this lady doesn't have the required skills. But, but since you have insisted that we should employ this person, we will go ahead to employ her. This person, this lady, I don't know, because she felt that she was recommended. Uh, our resolution time that was 8 a.m., but she will resume 10 a.m. and close before 4. And it became an issue to the point that the MD was agitated, that he didn't, want, he didn't like her behavior. And at that point, the MD was not referring the person you recruited. Each time we would like to, when that issue happens, when she leaves before time or she comes late, she comes, she will refer, you will refer to me as the person you recruited. So I, one day I went back to the lead tray, I drafted in me, and I referred him back to my recommendation that I was not followed. So when 
recommendations are not followed, they are bound to be a, a kickback for when the process is not followed. So when a process is not followed, ensure you document, you have a documented evidence of show that their process will not follow. Irrespective of whoever is involved, ensure the process must be followed. You must make your stand your ground, make your recommendation. So that when this issue happens, nobody will be able to blame you that uh, uh, you, you, the process will not follow. So finding the right talent in the seat of potential candidate is less than an art form. HR process associated with talent acquisition compounds much more than posting job, openings, and sourcing through resumes. It involves identifying key skills and quality, not only match the job requirement, but also align with the company's culture and values. At that point, that I talked about, she didn't have the culture code and the value of the company. But because our process were not followed, because of recommendation, I'm not saying it's wrong for anybody to be recommended. If the person can fit in rightly, there's no problem with that. But if the person can't fit in, and yet the culture of the company and the value of the company is not in the, in the DNA of that person, that is going to be an issue. Moreover, talent acquisition involves creating a compelling and genuine employer brand to attract the best talent, what is the value, uh, employee value proposition? Everybody wants to work in a place where they know that indeed the best will come out of them. Um, every employee, every candidate that is coming to an organization have two things in mind. One, how his salary will be higher and how it will be better than where he's coming from. So if he cannot meet those aims of coming to those, that organization, it's as good as the person have just wasted his time. So it's important right from the goal, the person you are recruiting, don't if your recruitment process is, oh, our recruitment is going to be closed out in a month, don't prolong it. Ensure that you meet the deadline. Ensure you meet the timeline and communicate to when the people are not qualified. Communicate to them, you didn't meet our requirements. We are moving ahead. We are not moving ahead with the next, uh, to the, we are not moving to the next stage with you. Let the people know. Let it be a process well defined that even whoever comes in, you are no longer there. Somebody will know this, how the process works. Yeah, it creates uh, a, magnet, a magnet that draws individual resonates with the company's mission and vision. A successful talent acquisition process doesn't just fill a position, it becomes the cornerstone of building its talent workforce. So it, that is very, very, very important to, word, to have a well-defined uh, talent acquisition uh, process because the first thing that will bring the right candidate if you miss this point of getting the right candidate, you can never amend it. It's the foundation. So uh, if the foundation is broken, there is no how you will amend it. Uh, in the case of this, maybe probably you can change or sign the person or probably put the person on a performance improvement. But in most cases, it's costlier than, uh, it's much better to get the right candidate than to do all, not be able to stress yourself to do a remedy. So, um, we also be looking at the, the next one, which talked about sowing the seed of success on body. Uh, your body process is very also important. Um, let you, your body process be defined. The best time to create success story in the life of any employee that is coming to an organization is through your body process. You must be able to inject the DNA of your company. You must ginger this, or as we say, you must ginger the swagger of the candidates of the, that is coming in, the employee that is coming. Let the candidate, employee know there is vibes in the organization. So you begin to say the, the success of the organization, you begin to say how we do things here, like what are we doing, where are currently work. Um, when you are coming in, we have your name printed on the board, pasted on the, on the wall. Who will not be happy seeing that the first day is coming saying, Welcome, Hyvie, welcome, uh, Richard, welcome, Peace, welcome, Anthony, and all that. So, that is the first impression of oh, these people care about me. So, after that, uh, we also have a uh, uh, body process that takes a week. Don't rush your body process. If your body process is, is a week, let it be a week. Um, in that body process, we have different departments that will come and talk to the person, ensure that the person get the right uh, details of their company. We have from the HR compliances, we have from technical guys, we have finance, we are there. Let everybody know. Uh, for compliance, for instance, compliance takes two days. And, uh, uh, and I'm going to tell you why compliance takes two days from among the, uh, as I did five days, because it's very important for every employee to know how the rules 
that govern the organization, especially corporate rules. We don't joke with that. If you make, if you if you fall out of one, you are broken all. So um, that is why we spend two days to educate a candidate, a um, employee, to inform them about compliance rule, especially as relates because especially as relates to the company, especially as relates to our behavior in the company, and especially as relates to our, uh, the regulatory agency, and also um, uh, uh, individual. Um, there are certain things that are a certain behavior, ethical behavior that are expected of every employee that comes into the organization. So that is the best time to sell your the, the seed of sources to any employee that comes in. If your uh, body process says, oh, uh, it's two days, for instance, uh, you are going to have having all the department talking to the person and uh, one department is not around. Don't drop it. Don't say, oh, this person is not around. You might not know that department that is not around will be the one the person will be fall short of fun wanting in, uh, when the nearest future. So allow the person to go through the process, invite the DNA of the company, give them the swagger, give them the welcome, they let them know this is how we do things here. And they will feel, feel at home. Uh, picture the excitement of new adventure because everybody who comes into an organization, they are happy, they are, they are excited. And um, uh, they, they want to know what is in for them. They want to know how their skill can be utilized. They want to know uh, how they become a, a past ambassador of that organization. So um, it's important you let them know their place in that uh, uh, organization. This is where the HR department of body process comes into play. It is not just about uh, paperwork and uh, benefits is all about creating a smooth and memorable introduction to the organization. Um, the impression, they said the first impression matters a lot. After you have done the interview now, the interview our contract has been signed. But the first time for the person to resume, to know what the organization is all about, is through your body process. So um, you must allow your uh, body process. Include activity. Um, like what we do, uh, we don't just do, as like I told you, I, we, did five, we do five things uh, on body process. We also include uh, acrobatic activities to eat. We include games. Um, why are we doing that? We are doing all that to create an impression of fun. See, as a matter of fact, my organization is a lovely place. I'm not just saying it anyway. Um, that is the honest truth. Um, it's a place where you come, you will feel at home. So we do that, we create that to ensure that every employee that comes in, is actually uh, feel at home from day one. It's so from the way we come at the front desk to the detail orientation and that follows, HR professional ensure new employee feel valued and informed. Your body process set the stage for lasting relationship and demonstrates the company's commitment to its employees. It is first uh, brush stroke on the covers of a uh, beautiful work of art. A travel organization starts with the right people, your body process introduces new employees to the company's value, policies, and culture, setting the tune for fulfilling and enjoying relationship. Um, a well executed body process ensures that new hires feel welcome, valued, equipped with the tools and knowledge they need to con contribute effectively from day one. By nurturing this initial connection, HR will set the stage for employees to strive and make meaningful contribution. Um, um, I know sometimes when we are doing a body, we think uh, it's all about the organization. It's not just all about the organization. Also, it's also about the employee. As a matter of fact, every employee you employ, you are employing that person to come and provide solution for you. So if there are no problem in that organization, there is no how you employ somebody to come and provide solution. So you also make them understand that they are not just coming to end salaries. They are not just coming to any benefits. They are not just coming to do other things, to have activity, uh, employee engagement and all that. Uh, so I should assure you, allow them to know that indeed they are also coming in to provide solutions. That is the reason why they are, they are employed in the first place. So if they can't provide such solution, there is no point being employed. And the only best time for them to, for you to inculcate that into them, for them to know that indeed they are coming to provide solution is through a body process. So uh, the next one, next outline, uh, we're we'll looking at um, cultivated growth. We talked about performance uh, management. Um, if you let your performance management system that you are using be well-defined, 
whether it's a balance call count, you are using 360, you are using OKR, let the people know this is what uh, is untenable here. Yeah. And let everything be clearly spread out from the beginning. Um, like where I work, for instance, we do uh, twice yearly, uh, H1 and H2. So from the beginning, every from the beginning, everybody knows. Um, as a matter of fact, it's not easy. We do it through the portal. Um, uh, so whether you are in Ghana, whether you are in Cote d'Ivoire, whether you are in UK, you are in uh, Cameroon, for instance, you are in Cairo, you are in London, uh, you are in US, in as much you are in the same department, you can see with your ID number, you can see everybody's uh, expectation. So it's not easy. Everybody knows what the management expected of them, and now they should put in their effort to achieve those uh, goals. Um, uh, don't use a confused system if you are you are merging balance call card together with uh, 360, or you are merging 360 with uh, or OKR. Uh, that process is not defined. Let people know, okay, this is the one we are using from the beginning, from the offset. And mind you, the, the process should be similar in the way that you are not doing it to be uh, to which want anybody. You are doing it to bring out the best, to cultivate growth in the art of the employee and to refine their skills. Every employee, no matter whether it's in the management cadre, whether it's in the middle, whether it's in the entry, has a rough edge that also needs to be refined. So the best way to refine the edges of any employee from the top to the bottom is through performance management system. So if your performance management system is not well defined, There'll be problem. There'll be chaos because people don't even know where they are going to. Um, management is projecting we are going to probably achieve a, a two hundred dollar uh, target for monthly, and uh, you the sales guys don't even know their projection, and the sales guy don't know what they will do to achieve those uh, targets. So let your uh, performance management system be defined. It's a flourishing organization. It's one where each employee's potential is realized and nurtured. HR process processes in performance management provide a framework for employees to set goals, receive constructive feedback, and continually develop their skills and capabilities. Through regular evaluation and opportunity for growth, employees are motivated to excel. Um, um, uh, like for instance, the process in your organization, if it's once in a year, let's see the once in a year, something that can be achievable. Let it be that everybody knows. If it's twice in a year, let it be twice in a year from the beginning. Don't say if from the beginning is twice, it's gonna be twice in a year, and uh, when the year commences, you are doing once in a year. It doesn't make sense. That is not a process. That means you are not following the process you have set out for yourself in the first place. So HR departments must drive this process. As a matter of fact, any organization that does not really place premium on performance management, that organization will not go far. Uh, that organization will never go far because the performance, how do you evaluate, how do you give feedback, how do you tell people, how do you allow people to meet their expectation, how do you define the expectation, how do people know what is expected of them? Um, uh, the difference between being an emotion is getting to define the expectation. So when these expectations are not defined, and the performance management system is in chaos, people will always be moving, but will not get to their destination. And the best of that organizational objective will not be achieved. By fostering a culture of continuous improvement and recognition of achievements, um, HR processes and performance management not only boost, uh, boost uh, individual performance, but also contribute to the organizational overall sources. Driving employee contributes Thriving employees contribute to flourishing organization. Performance management is, management is the habit of employee development. It is where expectations are set. Feedback is given and a growth is fostered. HR processes in this domain involve creating a fair and transparent system for every employee evaluation and continuous improvement. Um, the performance review is it just an annual ritual. It's a chance to empower employees to reach their potential, constructive feedback, clear goals, and part of professional development. All, all for under the purview, purview of HR performance management system, it's all about creating an environment where employees feel encouraged to try and achieve their best. Um, 
one thing you also have to know is that um, the performance management system should be a, a, a system to which owns, which owns um, or a, play, a system to retrench people. There's nothing wrong if you have to sack people based on performance. There's nothing wrong. But however, your performance system should also inculcate that uh, in our performance management system, there will be a room for performance improvement plan for anybody who is falling short of our performance. So if your performance is just to sack people, you just to restrain people, that means that performance management system is not complete. You are not developing people. You are not growing people. You are not cultivating people for growth. So um, it's important we, we, we have to go through all that to ensure that they bring out the best in every employee. So um, the next one, uh, at night we are going to be looking at investing in the future. How do you invest in the future as an employee, as an organization? Um, investing in employees as a return on investment. I uh, know most of employee uh, organizations will want to invest in employee, but however, if you see any employee, uh, organization that pays premium on employee development, especially related to um, investing in their development, definitely the objective of that organization will be, will be achieved similarly. Um, Special process dedicated, dedicated to employee development emphasize the importance of ongoing learning and skill enhancement. This includes offering training program, mentorship opportunities, and a clear career path. When employee feels that their growth is a priority, they are more likely to be engaged and satisfied. Employee development not only benefits individual employees, but also strengthens the organization. A workforce that constantly adapts and acquires new skills is better equipped to meet the ever evolving challenges of business lab space. It is a win win scenario for both employees and the organization. Um, this process of employee development should be a, a team, in fact, ingrained in the, uh, the, 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 in the HR processes. For instance, uh, at the beginning of the year, come up with, use after, after you have conducted your performance uh, of the previous year, look at the recommendation for those who need training. Even they are, if there are no people who need, even the management team, they also need training. And also in most cases, most people don't really place premium on uh, training the manager, uh, management team. They prefer training the lower career, forgetting that uh, the oil flow from the top. So if decisions are made from the top wrongly, it's going to affect everybody. So that's why they too also need to be trained. So what you do in that case, come up with a, a well-defined training plan, using your performance recommendation, uh, look out for trendy topic that you think will benefit um, your team members, you benefit everybody in the organization. They come up with a training plan of every department, stating their names, uh, stating their date, their, the, where the training will be conducted, if it's going to be internal facilitation or external one, the amount involved. And if it's going to be um, out of station, then you also have to put in the budget for uh, itinerary. It's going to rent hotel, flight tickets, and all that will also be put into consideration. Um, once you have defined, uh, you have formulated a training plan, when it's approached, when the training is approached, maybe a week before the training, you send a mail to the participants uh, informing them that the training is so they, they should get prepared. And every provincial, if it's outside the outside the, the station, uh, everything that is needed have to be done before uh, they actually depart. Not when they have got it there, they will call you, oh, our hotel was it booked, or, or probably they are looking for money to book their flight ticket. That should be. Let the process of developing employee be clearly stated. And um, no employee will not, want to be, will not want to work in an organization that cares, especially as it relates to their training and development especially uh, as relates to mentorship, especially as relates to having a clear career path. Um, uh, one of the things is that the best way to enhance competency is through training, uh, not just for the organization alone, but define their own competency. There are people who come to organization who, are, who don't want to have their, know what their career path is or are. The best time for you, for uh, there are people who have come into some organization, for instance, 
and the, the, the family comes in as a six person, and they later discover that you're not supposed to be in six. But if the training are not available, if mentorship uh, avenue are not available, coaching are not available, there's no way they will be able to define uh, their career path. And mostly, this happens to uh, the, uh, the entry level and the middle level. Sometimes, even those in the middle level, you discover that at a point you discover that you are not supposed to be in the career path they are. But uh, through the process of counseling, through the process of training, uh, define proper investment in employee, they'll be able to know where they fit in. So uh, uh, HRO department hold this as a responsibility to ensure that, uh, I know sometimes management will say, we don't have money to persecute this training and development. Uh, they want a cheap uh, uh, alternative. Yes, yeah, it must not be expensive, but there are alternatives you can adopt to ensure that training are for free, As, especially if your company is ISO certified. Obviously, there is no how uh, your company is ISO certified, you will not present training record. You must present training record because if they don't present a training record, there is no how they will, they are, there will be a recertification. So it's very important to place premium on training. Of your employee, invest it then because the more you invest, the more they will stay longer. Um, if you don't invest, they will look for a better opportunity where their skills can be can be refined. So it's, it's important for us to also be able to think of how to develop and follow the process of developing our employee, investing in them, even when they leave the organization, they become a feature, they become your ambassador that we'll be able to, you know, to tell people that this company train people, these people, uh, this company also in, like the interest of their employee. So um, it's not a, a, a one-way side, it's a win-win scenario for both the organization and the employee. So it's important for this process of training, investing in the future to fo be followed. And the next one we're also gonna be looking at is um, work-life balance, fostering resilience. Uh, don't call somebody, your process zero. Um, we create a life balance. This is a place where we have fun. Uh, we, we care about our employees. We don't stress our employees. And uh, when it's uh, after work hour, 9 p.m., you are calling your employee. Uh, you have not submitted this report. You are not following your process. Your process says we make life much easier for employee. I'm not saying if you are an, uh, an employee, that like you should do your job diligently and ensure that you close out your deliverables. That is not what I'm saying. That is not what I'm saying at all. But what I'm saying is that give respect people's time, respect people's privacy. Don't, don't just encroach on their privacy because you feel that they are reported to you. No, that is not fair. That is not a work-life balance. Or you say it's a work-life balance. And by 8 p.m., you are sending the person to prepare a slide for you that you present tomorrow. You didn't do that while we are in the working hour. So that is not a work-life balance at all. So in driving a, a, a work balance, a work, workplace, HR process prioritizes the well-being of employees. This involves promoting work-life balance, addressing stress, and providing support for mental and physical health by creating an environment where employees feel cared for. HR process not only processes not only increase job satisfaction, but also reduce turnover and asceticism. Um, where balance and every uh, employee are more likely to be engaged, productive and innovative. The organization benefits from increased resilience and culture that value both professional and personal growth. Um, um, like I stated before, ensure you enable that environment, create that environment where employee will feel cared for. Uh, one of the most important things, when employee feels that uh, the organization cares about them, they can go any length. They can go any length. They can sometimes do uh, overtime, even when they are not being paid overtime to ensure that they close out their deliverables. But when they feel that uh, there is no work balance, they are stressed out, they, before 5 p.m., they are already looking at the clock. They are already looking at their time to leave because there's no commitment. So there's no vibes that, that creates that life balance tough for that to be, have that commitment in that for that organization. So if you yourself as an HR notice that there is no like work-life balance, and also there are some organizations right now that's currently doing average, um, 
uh, don't say because you're, so your organization is doing hybrid because of that you are not monitoring your employee over and over. Are you asking them? Are you currently doing on your desktop or or laptop doing your work? No, that is not a work-life balance. Allow that to the breathe as well. Okay. Um, putting the puzzle together talks about payroll management. Oh goodness me! Uh, if there is anything that bring at the show, if there is anything that bring. Uh, in perfect soon reading to any organization is payroll. Nobody wants um, uh, a process that is not well defined. Whether if your processes, uh, the employee will receive their salary on the twenty eighth of that month, ensure is obeyed. For any reason that that will not happen, communicate to them. Uh, we have some challenges that uh, either from the bank or financial institutions that has uh, make it impossible for us to honor our agreement of ensuring that we pay uh, your salary monthly at uh, this particular time, uh, let them know. Don't just keep quiet and expect them to understand. They don't understand if you are talking about people's money. So uh, people will agitate when the time comes, the time you, your process is stated, in your process will be paid, they are not paid. So let it be defined. Let people know if it's coming in on the 30th, let it be on the 30th. If it's coming in on the 31st, let it be on the 31st. If it's coming on the 20th, let it be 20th. Let people know, oh, even when they are sleeping, they know at certain time, this is what our process of payroll is. Not when uh, you say in your, or your, in your process is 20, 20th, um, by 29th, the money has not arrived. You are not following your process. And when you are not following your process, what will happen? There will be crisis. So imagine an orchestra where orchestra. Oh, she's where, in the house. I said, don't she's in the house. Every musician expects um, the perfect note and rhythm in an organization. Employee expects yeah, the organization you to, you be, to be HR processes related to payroll are uh, harmonious, orchestrated of this siphon. Uh, from calculating the salary, bonuses, and benefits to ensuring compliance with labor laws, payroll processes are precise science that ensure employees are compensated accurately and on time. Any discount in, the, in this process can lead to disharmony within the organization. HR process, uh, HR ensures that the notes are played correctly, correctly and every time. Or, um, if your process of payroll says everybody in the same salary grades, everybody who is doing the same job should earn the same salary, or their bonuses might be different, ensure that is kept. Not someone else is receiving different uh, salary on this, performing the same position in the same position, performing the same job, and they are receiving different amount. That is not fair. Uh, you're not actually putting the puzzle together because. One thing is that information has a way of leaking. People discuss it with themselves. They discuss the employees chat. They discuss with themselves. They tell themselves how much they earn. So if you are not following your processes, what are you doing? You are creating the, the you are you are making the organization to fail because when people begin to agitate and um, people are not feeling they are feeling cheated, sooner or later you see people will be leaving the organization. There will be high turnover rate. So it's important you treat people. You pay them what people deserve. Follow your process. If your process says this is the time, let it be that time. Honor your process. People will respect you for honoring your process. Um, recognition and our rewards. First time loyalty. Okay. Um, one of the best ways for you to create loyalty for of employee is to follow this process of recognition and re rewards. Uh, I know there are some organizations because of uh, project, uh, projective provision or probably because of the resources, they don't put this into consideration. However, I want to let you know that um, you don't necessarily have to break the bank to recognize any employee. As simple as um, a plague, for instance, a certificate uh, uh, can do. How, how much is the printed of certificate is not expensive. So uh, if employee, just say employee of the year, uh, uh, the so -so -so persons have, is, we are glad to 
to reform the award. We are glad to have awarded this position, uh, this uh, to recognize you as our employee of the year. We expect more of you. Keep it up. As simple as that, means it would, we motivate the person to do more. So when the person gets home, you go and frame that uh, certificate on the wall. Uh, in, my, in this position, I will, I'm the employee of the year for this year. So that person will be happy. As simple, it's not expensive, but yet you have created an impact in the heart of that person to be committed to the organization. So you are fostering loyalty for that per a person to, to be committed to the organization. So it's important to follow the process. It might not be expensive, follow the process, make recommendations. Um, if you don't want to go beyond that, beyond the just printing of certificates or making awards, what you do, you can have financial benefit to it, uh, or probably buying of products uh, as well. He said uh, the process of rec recognizing and rewarding employees for their contribution is a vital element in creating a thriving workplace. HR process related to compensation, incentive, and recognition programs serve to motivate employees and acknowledge their hard work and dedication. Uh, when employees are recognized and rewarded for their efforts, they are more likely to remain committed to the organization, which is true. Uh, this, in turn, less to leads to reduce turnover, increase loyalty, and positive impact on the organizational bottom line. Um, yeah. So uh, if you currently don't have the process of recognizing your employee, don't let your employee from year in and year out without being recognized. Let them be recognized. As simple as uh, uh, putting their name on the board, uh, their picture, if you, if you feel that, okay, um, you it might be too expensive to have uh, a birthday party for celebrity people who are uh, celebrating their birthday on a monthly basis or individually. You can group that together. Every employee that are falling within that organization, uh, that mode, you group that together, have one, buy one cake for them, buy wine or, or other drinks, then they will, be, they will feel happy because they feel that the organization cares for them. But even you don't do that, and they also notice what other organizations are doing and uh, all their, uh, their colleagues are telling them of what other organizations are doing. Definitely they'll feel that the organization doesn't care about them. So um, as little as uh, sending a test message to an employee on his birthday matters a lot. As little as sending um, a representative uh, in uh, a colleague getting married in wedding ceremony or burial ceremony matters a lot because the employee feels that, oh, I'm being recognized. It feels that, oh, the organization cares about me. But when these things are not done, as little as this may sound anyway, they matters. You might think they don't matter, but they actually matters. Employee value this. So it will reduce turnover rate and also increase loyalty. So we're going to look at the next uh, um, outline. It talks about fostering collaboration and innovation, open communication. Okay. Um, um, don't, open, don't operate a uh, organization that has a closed door policy. No, no, no. If your process says that everybody is free to hear their view without being victimized, let it be so. Not when everybody heard their You said, oh, everybody is free to hear their view, they will not be victimized. Uh, you to be anonymous, and when they add their view, you are using that as a, a weapon to victimize them. You are not following your processes. Your process say, okay, you are free to make recommendations. You are free to communicate openly without be with, without any fear of anybody uh, using it against you. Follow that process to the end. Um, um, because when people feel uh, the best way. Uh, there is this statistic that says that the um, the bottom people, the entry, the lower credit, no much, uh, knows eighty five percent of what happens in the organization. Okay, um, the, the middle class knows about ten percent, and the the management team just knows only about five percent. So the best way to know how to improve your processes, the best way for you to drive effective and seamless processes is through open communication. Do survey, for instance, uh, say, so, okay, in this organization, what do you think we are not doing right? What do you think uh, we need to improve? Or what processes do you think we need to improve? Okay, if you want, don't want people to know that they are the ones saying it, make it anonymous. You can send a Google file out or probably print, um, 
create a form, send it to everybody, let them feel. In the way they are feeling, you do it, you create it in a way that you can hide their image so that you will know. Or if they're not feel comfortable, because okay, uh, we are going to create a ballot box. Uh, just write your combination, remove your name, don't put your name, don't put any of, any of your details, put it in that box. We, at the end of the day, we'll collate, look at their review, and then we we'll increase our, our better our processes. So let people communicate freely. When people free, have that free mind of communicating, you begin to see creativity. You begin to see chain of idea. The reason why people are afraid to communicate I don't know if, if I communicate, uh, somebody is going to use it against me, or you have a policy that um, don't foster an environment that 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 um, that um, um, uh, gossip. Don't create an environment that breeds uh, gossip. Because when you do that, you are pitting the people against themselves. Uh, you are actually doing a uh, divana rule, and anybody any. I don't know if a divana rule is a process anyway. It's not in a process in any reason, but people, most people try to use divana rule to assure that uh, they get information from the employee. You are not following a proper process because what at the end of the day, you know, the person might think is winning, but at the end of the day, you are outing your employee, you are outing your organization. When people feel that uh, whatever they say, uh, people are always be uh, on them, spying what they say or gossiping about them, because that becomes a culture of division and nobody, no organization that is divided can achieve its end. So you must ensure that um, one of the policy also uh, we have in our place also is that you don't speak your individual language. No, especially if you can speak your individual language, if everybody in that office understand your language. For instance, if you are a Yoruba person and uh, we have uh, because the multi uh, the UK office uh, people can uh, misunderstand what you are saying in your dialect. Okay, so the best way to curb that mind of not inclusive in what they they are saying, let us speak general language. It's clearly stated in our policy that we shall communicate in English as the official language of the company and the official language of the nation. So. If anybody who doesn't understand your language, right, uh, is there, you are not permitted to speak your language. It's as simple as that. If you do that, you have broken, you have committed an offense. So let people know that there is no room for favoritism. Everybody is free to communicate. And the reason why we do that, when people begin to think yeah, you are only, you don't understand their language, you are speaking their language in the midst of someone who doesn't understand. The next thing they will begin to think is that you are gossiping about the person. And the person will feel that uh, what are they saying that they don't want me to hear? So the wish should be. So ensure you create that process that I let everybody know that we are one. We have one identity, irrespective of our uh, diversity or uh, diversity, we, our identity is one. And the best way to create one identity is open of communication. So effective HR process also encourage open communication through other organization. This includes mechanism for feedback, conflict resolutions, idea sharing, a culture of open communication, foster collaboration, creativity, and innovation. Uh, employees who feel heard and value are more likely to comp contribute their insights and ideas, which can lead to improved products, service, products, services, and business strategies. A flourishing organization is one that embraces change and innovation. The best way to have a research and development free of charge without being paid for it is through your employee. And um, you can never know the idea. You can never know the pros, the idea that will drive the company to the next level. If only you give any, uh, you give opportunity for people to share ideas. And it is only when people uh, midwife ideas, they bite ideas, and they assure that uh, there's collaboration that actually the company can flourish. And the reason why any organization is in business is to make profit. So if there are no improvements, if there are no improvement of processes, processes, if there are no improvement of sharing of ideas, there's no way. Whether it be ECs or whether it be business development, 
uh, the way there is no collaboration, definitely where there is no open communication for people to know, oh, this is what our competitors are currently doing. This I think I think we this is what we should do to improve our process to ensure that we meet up with our competitors or we surpass them. But when our process is not the open communication is not there, is to give feedback. Uh, the company will not meet its aim. Uh, what you simply be having, you're having people who have different uh, objectives, different from the organization. Everybody is trying to achieve, as flying others to achieve their own aims, uh, which is not in the best of the, uh, the interest of the organization. So uh, the next outline we are also going to be looking at, which is very, very important. Um, uh, before I actually go into this, there's another process we talked about, uh, um, um, implementing in, internal compliances, which have to do with uh, uh, disciplinary process. I know um, uh, uh, the, uh, the company that I once worked with, okay, I think it was last week, before I go to that, that was last week, my lead came and said, oh, I want this guy to be fired. I said, why? He said, uh, the guy is not meeting up with expectation and uh, his disrespect is not loyal to the company. I said, okay, uh, if you want this guy to be fired, we must exhaust our process. Uh, this plan, you have not made, there's no evidence to show that this guy was reprimanded. There was no evidence to show that this guy was given verbal warning. There's no documented evidence that this guy was given a query and he has had a warning. There was no evidence at all that it was, there was a committee set up to investigate what uh, the issue were. We cannot just drop the process to the final stage of sacking. So the process of discipline process must be followed from the beginning. You know why? If you don't do that, if you don't follow your process, you are exposing yourself to litigation. You are exposing the company to sharks and crocodiles. So um, the reason why the process are there is to drive uh, the achievement so that there will be issues. As shown, if you say, oh, if you commit an offense, first of all, you, uh, there will be a verbal warning, there will be documented evidence, then you will face a committee, and after that, you will be, uh, you have a representative that will represent you in that committee that will hear, a third party that will hear whatever they are going to say, and what the recommendation would be and the outcome would be. And um, after that, if there is any uh, um, judgment or any reprimand that will be given to you. So if your process state that, don't drop that process and go straight to relieve that person if it's a grievous offense. Even if it's asked to involve the issue of stealing, falsification, still go through the process because uh, there is need for fair hearing. Um, there was uh, a guy was accused to have a bezel money, my former company. They accused this guy to have a bezel money and they were to be relieved. And mind you, when we did the investigation, we discovered this guy, they were accusing falsely. They were accused, it was not part of them that actually did that deal. The, the other two, there were three, the other two actually participated, even executed it. But because they wanted this guy to leave with them, they, they claimed that this guy was part of the initial plan and uh, later he backed out. But through the investigation, we investigated, we did all investigation, we did uh, follow the process, we discovered that the guy was not part of them. So if the process were not followed, would have just would have just passed judgment on just. So it's very important for us as HR practitioners to follow our process. Even management, if they don't know, communicate to them. If they say, oh, we want to follow our ways, I'm the, I'm the boss, I'm the one taking the lead. Let them know that we have a process. It might be tough, but let's stand your ground that you are the, actually the driver of your process. Because you know why? When you are no longer there, they will respect you for what you did. Even when they did respect you while you were there, when you are left, they will begin to tell the person, next person, indeed, we have one has somebody who is sure that our process will followed. Um, so um, you must ensure internal compliance. You must review ethical behaviors. In views ethical behavior, the standards and process must be followed. Don't drop it. The next one I talked about is it's not the end. Actually, not the end. It's not the end of the career if anybody leaves the organization. It's not the end of the company, but the impact you create in the, uh, when the person is exiting, uh, what you the person give the feedback, the person give they can be used to improve the processes. So 
this process extends even beyond life cycle of an employee. I calculated the exit strategy. When an employee departs, it's an opportunity for HR department to gather insight, understand the reason behind the departure, and improve processes. The off-body process is a reflection of the company's character, ensuring that even the goodbye, employee feel respected and appreciated. Don't see, don't you see it as an enemy. The person has been, oh, the person is leaving. It's, a, it's not our enemy. No, no, no. That shouldn't be. If the person is leaving, let him make, make the person an ambassador. Like, tell him when you are going. In fact, you are not going to, going to carry the person to be able to tell the people how the things work in the organization so that the organization is a good place. If the place is actually good. If the place is good, they will be the one to advocate. Oh, um, if there are any vacancies, let me know. I can make a recommendation. I can make I can refer somebody to come and work for you because of how you guys to tell me. But when your processes are not good, your exit plan and your exit process is not even in order. When you call that person, you have a, a position to close out, and you call that person, can you make a recommendation? Oh, you say, bro, I don't think uh, I have anybody. Even when they have, they won't want to recommend somebody to a place that is toxic, for instance. They won't want to recommend a place, somebody for a, to a place that um, they, they are not fee valued. So you must be able to create that avenue while they were there, so that when they leave, okay, once they leave, um they becomes your ambassador so okay uh the dna is always there now so once you make you you cross them you know how happy it will to refer people to come and work for your organization so it's important to put down as a process let them don't do as a process by verbal uh uh stuff let it be documented oh this is what this person says this is where we are not doing it right. I think we can improve, use this recommendation to improve our processes. Or oh, this is what this person says about this manager. If you I need to sit one-on-one -on -one with the manager involved, uh, create a scenario, not necessarily you're going to say, oh, this is what this person says, test me when he was leaving. No, create a scenario, ensure the person understand where you are going to, letting the issue be resolved through the mechanism of exit plan that the person has put in place, the organization has put in place, and recommendation were made. So that process a law of discussing with the person involved. So if you say, oh, my line management didn't treat me well, didn't value me when I was here, sit the line manager down, discuss with the line manager, and ensure that you create that relationship with his team members so that we have a most um, relationship, both mutual, even, even the work, workplace, and outside the work. You can never can tell, uh, I've seen people who, who were colleagues and became friends even when they were no longer together in the same organization. So uh, don't see it as a do or die affair when somebody is leaving. Yeah, everybody has vision, everybody has a dream to move to a better place. Even if your organization is the best, there are still places that are better than yours. So don't make it as an enemy when somebody leaves or you are seeing the person has become um, uh, and your enemy that should not ever leave the organization. Nobody is tied to any organization. They are just like they say, uh, so they go, so they come, barrack remains. So people will always leave. There will always be a migration of people from one organization to another. People will always migrate. So don't see it as a past off when people leave your organization. Um, so uh, before we go into asking your questions, and uh, we also provide uh, answer to those questions, we'll be talking about our conclusion, why it's important for HR processes to be, to be in place. Um, we understand also, we understand also before we go into conclusion, we also talked about uh, how you can drive HR process with technology, okay? Um, um, whether it be in finance, whether it be in sales, whether it be in the HR, there are HR technology uh, software you can use to drive. Technology have come to stay. You have make our life much easier. You can use technology to drive our internal process. Like uh, our performance management system that I talked about, where it's being driven solely by technology. We have a internal portal that even when, no matter the country you are, you are in the same department with me, with your ID, I can see your performance management system. I can see what your manager scored you. I can see uh, what your expectation were or are. So technology are making life more easier. So if that process of performance management system is still being done manually in your organization, bro, wake up, wake up, because technology is making life easy for us. So ensure you make recommendation to management, 
to adopt technology, okay? And mind you, you cannot optimize a process where there are no standards. You firstly, let the standard or site be implemented even before you begin to think of how to optimize them through technology. And um, if you are in sales, for instance, um, uh, you are in construction company, you are in the manufacturing company. Uh, today, as I tell you, there are cameras uh, AI that has AI feature that can tell you if you are in a manufacturing company, you manufacture goods and services. I can tell you the numbers of uh, the goods inside the carton. Um, there are technology today, there are cameras today that can tell you when somebody is not putting up PPE, uh, it tell you the out. To create an alarm that this person is not putting up PPE or safety boots, helmet, uh, hand glove, reflective jacket. You will say it, everybody will hear. So you can also deploy that, especially if you work in a, a construction department, a construction site. Or um, there are also technologies today that can take inventory, even without manual cutting there. You know the number of, uh, um, uh, of items in the carton. We're just scanning the barcode. You already know the numbers. It's as simple as that. You don't even be to count the inventory, inventory department, you don't count manually. How many how long will you do that? When technology and make life more easier. So HR departments has a duty to drive these processes through technology. Um uh, if for instance you work in a supermarket, for instance, and you discover the people are always stealing, the sales are not always complete, or uh you people are not making profit. You can introduce a cash uh, registry. So whatever it is, say they sell out, it's registered. So nobody is going to say, "Oh, we didn't say we are not making profit." Everything is recorded. So at the end of the day, you cross check, you do uh, a proper evaluation, and uh, is um, against what was sold, what is left, and uh, the money at the actual money. So by then you know if actually somebody has cheated or not. In that way, you have caught any ethical behavior that would have uh, sustained the company or make uh, the company to lose profit. So that is technology. You can adopt that as well. And uh, HRO has that rule to ensure that um, ensure that uh, the process. Is, also, in the area of security, for instance, if you want your uh, your organization's premises to be secure and your employee to be secure. There are today, um, there are cameras today that will tell you the numbers of vehicles that are coming in, that came into the company. The number of people that came in, they will give you the number. You don't need to, they will, they will write their name on their, on their a sheet of paper for you to know the people that, how many people that came accurately, people that came in and people that exited the, com the company. And the great number of vehicles are automatically registered. So um, if you want to create safety for your employee, safety for your visitors, you can deploy such technology, driving the process of safety, uh, um, uh, employee health and safety as well through technology. Okay, going to conclusion, we talked about the key HR process and the tapestry of ammunition culture sources. They influence not just individual employees, but the collective spirit of organization. From the first hello to the last goodbye, HR is at the heart of every significant milestone in employees' journey. Understanding and mastering this process is not just an imperative for HR professionals, but an essential skill for every stakeholder. In the grand theater of business, it is the path to excellence, creating a workplace where employees thrive and organizations flourish. Okay, at uh, this point, I'll be opening the floor for questions and answers. Um, to lead us in this session, um, Mr. Louis, I mean, you can take it from here. So if you have questions, if you have any concern, contribution, you are free, you have the floor. Thank you so much for this excellent presentation. This has been really enlightening and educative. Do we have any questions or comments or contributions tonight before we call it a wrap? I think I see a question in the chat box. Susan says, what is the best performance management tool? Does the tool have to do with the specific organization? 
Okay. Um, there is no uh, one fit all for any organization. Depends on what you want to achieve. There are organizations that, uh, that adopt uh, Ballast scorecard. There are organizations who prefer 360. Um, there are organizations who prefer OKR. Depends on what you want. Um, they both have their pros and their cons. From uh, for 360, for instance, the benefit of 360 is that it's not just one person that is evaluating you. Your colleagues will evaluate you, your direct supervisor will evaluate you, and the, uh, your, the superior of your, uh, um, of your boss will also evaluate you. So it's everybody giving their input of what they see about your performance. So there's no, there are no bias. There are no biases about it. Everybody is giving uh, their, their perspective of what they feel your performance are. So if that is what works for you, your organization, you can do that. However, if it's a balance scorecard that also suits your organization, define the financial perspective, the internal process, the business angle, and the development angle as well, your, your training and development for the employee. If that is what suits you as organization, you feel that this is what we can go with, you are free to adopt that. I hope I answer your question. Thank you so much. Let's take Mr. Tochuku Ume, then we'll come back to the chat box. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, uh, facilitator, for this um, insightful uh, discussion. Um, I, I had a situation where I, I'm assisting a particular company to set up their HR systems, and then uh, the the MD, or is it the CEO, as I may call him, uh, this, uh, had an issue with a particular staff, and he went ahead to suspend the staff. And I insisted that in this period of suspension, we need to do an investigation into the allegation and have a conclusive you know, situation about these guys' uh, um, allegations. However, uh, a few weeks down the line, he calls me one day to begin to make an allegation that this guy was on suspension and was uh, contacting people in the office to help him do something relating with some clients, additional allegations. And at this point, he's confirmed he has to sack the guy. And I insist, okay, do we have some evidence? He says, yeah, the, what he saw, he knows what he saw, that uh, he doesn't want the person that he saw on his system to know. And long story short, he terminated this guy contract, even without involving me. He went behind my back sent an email directly, terminated the contract. And this is without, you know, like following any procedure, even though we've been trying to instill these procedures. So in this kind of situation, I, I feel bad for this uh, colleague. And I, I don't know what do you think I, I can do, especially considering the situation to maybe all these kind of things happening again in that kind Okay, uh, I can imagine that would be a sole proprietor company, right? Where the risks and caprices of the person who owns the company determine the two of the of the uh, of the pipeline. So um, absolutely, there is nothing you can do. Firstly, the process was it followed, and the person has been relieved of his appointment. Then you can't call the person back. You are not the owner of the company. The person has taken his. Is judgment. However, experience has been learned. Uh, since you now have experience of what has transpired, the best thing is to ensure next time the process are followed. You communicate to the MD that what he or what he or she has done exposes the company to litigation. Um, there are legal risk to what he has just done without following his internal processes. Because where, uh, if there is for a, a paraventure in the future, there is a case is still against that company, the internal process and against the law will also be used. So firstly, they will, you have to present your documented evidence because comp uh, comp doesn't work with VABA submission. Yeah, in, in most cases, um, you have to provide your documented evidence, what this guy did uh, and the resolution that was made the column that was formed to relieve this person. Um, but uh, like I said before, it's an experience. 
But there are absolutely there is nothing you can do at this point because the deed has been done. But you can begin to educate, especially if the MD fees that uh, is above the law, begin to start with the line managers. Let them know what is as uh, the their process says. Another thing also to also educate, likely educate the money, the, the MD. Create a weekly bulletin email. Let the MD be on that say email, email tray. Uh, copy, put it in copy, send it to every employee. Uh, let let in a, 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 a weekly stuff bulletin that every staff will read. Align the processes that are in place in the organization. Let them know the processes because in most cases, the reason why this infractions happen is because uh, the people who are supposed to drive these processes are not too aware. So you have to systematically begin to educate them so that they will be aware of these processes. So that they will also be aware there are consequences for every action they will take uh, in the future or that we expose the company to certain actions, regulatory actions. Um, uh, I have a question here. Firstly, I will ask, I have two questions here. Firstly, I'm going to ask uh, Solar Aware. It says, can this link be posted? Can you post the journey link for HR mentorship? Um, if you belong to any of the group, I believe uh, occasionally uh, the link for joining uh, HR mentorship are usually posted. However, if you are not yet in any member of any of the group, I believe um, uh, Mr. Oluyemi can still post it here for people to see. So the next question says, um, Mr. Oluyemi, I hope I'm in order. Okay, the next one says uh, from Grace, said, what can an HR do in a new office where there is no HR process in place? Uh, but ask to review an employee handbook first. What come first? Yeah, um, most handbook contains processes. So if they have employee handbook, for instance, uh, there are some processes already embedded in those handbook, in that handbook, as the case may be. Um, what you need to do in a case where there are processes not currently in place because that uh, handbook may not be updated, you can inculcate them. Uh, um, processing like um, uh, employee engagement um, and all that, if they are not there already, you can incorporate all those ones in. And um, the ones that you feel that uh, uh, are also that you can actually review, that is the purpose of reviewing a document. Because uh, you, that's why you, you when you pick up a book, you see a first bash uh, this, bash or that. It means that the dark document has been reviewed for of some numbers of times. So the numbers of times the document has been reviewed, clearly stated that this document has been reviewed for certain time so that you know that it's up to date. So if you are currently in an organization where there are no processes, put, review the handbook first, put the processes in place and communicate to an employee. One thing for you to have a process and not be communicated, and not be communicated, you can have a process that is dormant. If you have a dormant process in place that is not communicated, it's as good as it's not in existence. So once you create a process, for instance, or our SOP says that before you use the pool vehicle, you must communicate to HR department or admin session. It is the admin session, you must make a request. The admin session will then that look at the requests that are available if there are people not online to use that vehicle. So if there are people online, then you communicate, oh, this, this pool vehicle has been booked, or these pool vehicles, they are not available. So when they are available, communicate. That's a process in place. Everybody knows, oh, if you want to use the if, if it's not there before now, everybody knows that if you want to use the pool vehicle, you must make requests. And that request has to be granted before you can use the vehicle. So assure you optimize that there might be also, you might not have this process in place. Assure you do that. Um, assure you create a process, communicate to them, educate employee, 
it will take a while for people to really get used to these processes. But don't make it an hasty stuff that, oh, I'm just coming in. Everybody must know the process at home. No, let it be a gradual introduction of this process. Communicate to people. And at the end of the day, you yourself, you'll be happy that indeed you created this process. Okay. Um, okay, I think I've had service for the performance management. We're asking the two have to do with uh, a particular stuff. Okay, that will be all from my end. I think Adiola has a question. Adiola, if you are still available, you can quickly ask your question or share your comments. Hello, Adiola, I see your hands up. Hello, Adiola, are you there? If you are there. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Go ahead, please. Good evening. Good evening. Right. Good evening. So my question is in relation to um an organization that just started expanding to other um countries. For example, um, maybe um, like Europe and then some other African countries. And as an HR professional that uh, just uh, is not really good to um coordinating activities in other countries like this, what do you advise and what are the um, and if you can, um, maybe if there are training or professional course that might help or something. Uh, I, I, it appears I didn't actually get what you were saying. Uh, Mr. Lee, did you get that? No, I didn't. Yeah, please, can you be audible? All right, I am. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. So, um, what I was um asking for, I said that my question is in relation to um to an HR um person. Hello, please. Can you hear me now? Yeah, much better. Hello, please. Can you hear me? Much better. Hello. Yeah, we can yeah, go ahead. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, so my question is in relation to um HR professional that um uh, our organization is now expanding to other countries, and um being that I'm only used to um activities within Nigeria, and now the organization is the uh, organization is expanding to like let's say europe and some other african countries what are the things you think i need to put in place or do that will help to also cover the um, recruitment activities and every other activities over there maybe policies and also if there are professional courses or maybe trainings that you think i need to take that might help um in this career growth that's my question sir Okay, uh, thank you for that question. That is actually a beautiful question. Um, we understand that uh, when there is an expansion, when the company is, is actually expanded to beyond the shore of border of it, uh, where the company was actually established. What I think you should do as HR personnel is to be educated, go for training, uh, study more, about the, uh, where your company is going to, the rules and regulations that take place there. That is where the first thing is as a start from. Because if you don't actually know the rules, there's no better way for you to put a process in place. So know what is obtainable there cultural wise, know what is obtainable legally, and also know what is obtainable there ethically. Uh, it is this that you know be when you are fully abreast of this that you definitely know how uh, to formulate policy or uh, um, establish uh, processes and put processes in place in where those companies are. Because the laws that guide recruitment in Nigeria will not necessarily not guide recruitment over there. Uh, I know there is a universal law that says that uh, you must not employ a minor. Um, so if your organization want to play by the rules, you shouldn't uh, put a process in place that will employ manner. No, that will not work because 
from the outset you are exposing your company. So you know the rules that guide the, the, the where your company will be situated, knows uh, the cultural uh, beliefs, know what is obtainable there cultural wise, religious wise, it's also important for you to know. Don't assume or you group everything together, what is obtainable in my country. You'll be surprised when you get there, you'll be culturally shocked that what is acceptable in your country is not acceptable there. Or what is not acceptable in your company in your country is acceptable there. So get yourself equipped, get more knowledge about the places your companies are expanding to, and um, you, you are good to go. I hope I answer your question, Adela. Okay. Uh, in the absence of no other uh, question, let me check the chat box if there are questions to be asked. Okay, uh, Mr. Lee, let say also you can also try to connect with uh, HR persons in each country. That was also helped. Ask them how they do their things there. That, that matters a lot. Uh, begin to ask people, oh, how do people do things there? Because there is there is there is great joy in collaboration. There, are, there is nothing hidden. There is nothing absolutely uh, uh, difficult to do if you meet the right people who will guide you. You don't necessarily have to be in that country, uh, but building on leverage or the knowledge of people who are there. It's a great uh, privilege. So try to network, network with people, professionals who are in that field of where you, or your company is or what they do, especially HR, since you are in HR now. Uh, uh, leverage on their understanding of the environment, leverage on their cultural perspective, leverage on the legal uh, perspective as well, so that you also be fully abreast of what is expected of your company so you can advise management properly. Okay, uh, Grace asked again, where payroll is prepared by, account, by the account? Can HR still write payroll process? Thank you so much. Um, it's always a, a conflict between accounts or finance department with the HR. Someone will say, oh, um, this one will say, I want to, I'm, I'm the one fully in charge to prepare payroll. Uh, in the recent sense, if your company processes is the account department that prepare payroll, um, let it be. However, the idea thing, uh, there should be a three level preparation of payroll. The administration should come from um, uh, the HR department, the account department will vent, and uh, if there are any errors, we correct. Then the final approval should come from the MD or whoever, our uh, chief financial officer, whoever is mandated to approve. So when there are proper balance and check, though you will eliminate fraud. Um, the reason why you see um, people, especially in payroll, for instance, where there are no checks and balance, it, it gives room for fraud. So if the process is not in place, there are three level checks of payroll, please assure you do that. And don't allow one person to prepare payroll for too long. You see one person, you go to a company, one person is preparing payroll for or to five, one person has been preparing payroll for five years. You are simply setting that company for failure because there will be massive fraud. A sure occasionally you change people who prepare payrolls and people who vent payroll is very, very important. So the conflict between who should, uh, the conflict between who should prepare the payroll shouldn't be uh, a big deal if there are these processes in place. Uh, currently, if there are no such process in your place, in currently where you work, ensure that you put this process in place. No one person approved. Ensure that their checks are balanced in the preparation. Thank you. This will be our last question for the day. Thank you for your time. We are most grateful that you have stayed this long to listen and to tune in. Thank you very much. Mr. Louis, over to you. Thank you so much.
Mr. Anthony, for your generosity. We appreciate you. And we thank everyone who has joined tonight. All right. Tomorrow, the recording will be on the YouTube channel. Do have a productive week ahead, everyone. Good night. Right. God bless. Thank you. Good night, everyone.